What is unexplained infertility? Welcome to Fertile Minds today. I'm Scott Salisbury. I'm a fertility specialist uh, with QFG in, in Brisbane. And today we're going to explain unexplained infertility as well as we can explain anything. So firstly, we should start with a, a definition. Um, and it's a difficult definition because it's changed over the years. Essentially, when someone presents with difficulty falling pregnant, we look at a number of tests to try and establish what the underlying cause is. We would look firstly to see what sperm quality is like, whether ovulation is occurring, whether there's tubal patency, and in modern day definitions, that's also included investigations for things like uh, ovarian reserve and indeed tests of things like endometriosis. When we don't find an obvious cause, we label that unexplained infertility. So it's an unfortunate diagnosis because a lot of people want us to find a, a cause and be able to put a band-aid on that or treat that appropriately. Uh, and that's just not the case with unexplained infertility. Now, of course, unexplained infertility doesn't mean there's not a cause, but in our basic workup, we haven't established that. But it also means very encouraging that a good number of people will be able to achieve a pregnancy um, by their own accord without any um, treatment. So I do encourage people to continue in the old fashioned manner um, and good pregnancy re results are obtained over the ensuing year or two. Of course, most people don't want to wait that long in order to achieve a pregnancy. And I guess from that perspective, uh, people are asking about whether they should go and see a fertility specialist. And when that should occur is always a difficult dilemma, but I always say when people start to be worried is when people should uh, present. Typically that would be 12 months of trying in someone under the age of 35 and someone over the age of 35, perhaps it may be around the six, uh, six month mark. Uh, equally, if there was any other obvious cause like infrequent periods, etc., or previous surgery that may have compromised their fertility, then obviously earlier presentation would be appropriate. Having uh, established that the diagnosis is unexplained infertility where there's been no obvious cause, in other words, a diagnosis of exclusion, um, we do run through the process of uh, conception and that may sound a silly thing to do, but in fact, uh, if you think about it logically, um, we can establish whether people ovulate, but we can't establish whether those eggs are actually retrieved for, uh, by the tube. We can time intercourse appropriately, we don't know how often that sperm actually uh, moves up through the cervical mucus, through the uterus and actually finds the egg. I mean, this is an environment where they're in the dark, they're microscopic and uh, they may never meet each other. And even if there is this chance meeting, how often do they fertilise the egg? Um, because we know with IVF only about 60% of eggs fertilise. And then of course the embryo has got to be normal and that's very much an age dependent thing uh, where with increasing age there's an increasing rate of abnormalities. So um, it's important to convey all that and, and also the last part of the process where the embryo trans is transported back to the uterus is also an important one. So they're factors that we don't truly understand. So part of our strategy in managing or, or treating unexplained infertility involves in playing the probability game by boosting those parameters. So in other words, we may look at helping you with timing. Um, typically people would have done temperature charts or checking mucus. Uh, which I don't really think are a useful way of doing it. Um, they're a very low key way of doing it. People, um, it's not that it's not useful, it's just that I think a lot of people find that stressful. Uh, certainly urine detection kits, uh, the, the so-called ovulation predictor kits, uh, are a useful adjunct, but again, they're expensive and, and they are often conjure up lots of anxiety in people um, through their usage. In the medical sense, we use blood tests and or ultrasounds done vaginally and even sometimes trigger injections to optimise the timing of intercourse. Uh, and, and that's quite a commonly used strategy um, to be reassuring to people that they're on the right track of what they're doing naturally. Often we go beyond the realm of that and we look at boosting ovulation. And by boosting ovulation, I mean make the cycle hormonally more correct or in some circumstances, increasing the number of eggs you produce. Um, they would typically be done with tablets like Clomiphen or Letrozole. These are anti-estrogen tablets that um, increase the number of eggs that you produce and also strengthen various facets of your cycle. Uh, typically they would um, have no side effects, but minimal side effects like headache, hot flushes, um, sometimes mood disturbance. Um, can be experienced. Uh, but of course, the biggest concern is that there is a risk of multiple pregnancy with these medications. Uh, while small um, and often people are desirous of multiple pregnancy, these are very high risk uh, events and 
and the risk of preterm labour, miscarriage, etc., are all increased. So they're certainly not our desired option in the short term. We'll often also consider um, injections like we use with IVF in the form of FSH. Um, these are daily administered injections. And whilst the evidence for both using these tablets and indeed FSH in unexplained infertility is not well proven, uh, there are strategies that, that make people feel like they're doing something proactive towards an endpoint. Um, we'd sometimes also entertain the possibility of doing an insemination and, and that's where we collect sperm from the partner, um, we prepare the sperm and we actually place it into the uterine cavity as a way of getting sperm up closer to the action point. Um, all those strategies are again just increasing the probability. But still we don't know in that equation whether egg is being picked up, whether egg is being fertilised, whether that egg is normal, whether it is progressing, whether it's making its way back to the uterus. So that's where we might entertain the possibility of doing IVF. And IVF really is a way of increasing that probability quite dramatically. Uh, because typically we'd get 10 to 12 eggs with IVF, uh, you know, a year's worth of releasing one egg a month. Um, and we'd see firsthand whether they'd fertilise. We follow their progress in the laboratory and we watch their growth to five days. Uh, we still don't strictly know whether they're normal, although there's been big advances in that field as well in terms of genetically testing. Um, and sometimes um, we even genetically test couples in advance of that to try and predict whether there's a higher chance of having a child with an anomaly. Um, but again, on this occasion, we've got a fertilised egg that's grown appropriately and in the right place. So we've gone a long way to making sure we've got as many facets uh, correct as not. So it's still really important in that time phrase that people are encouraged to keep on trying normally because we've all heard the stories of people um, that conceive in between treatment uh, strategies. It's also a time to reflect on, on uh, lifestyle modifications, the amount of alcohol, the amount of coffee you have, optimising weight, uh, making sure you're taking all the appropriate supplements and actively engaging people in the process. And I think that's really important because everyone's an individual again and here we are suggesting these things but by no means are we uh, pushing the barrow of them. And what I mean by that is that uh, at the end of the day, the choice of what treatment strategy is utilised is, is entirely up to you. Um, we're just here to offer the suggestions and, and, uh, and for you to choose. Um, and some people, for various reasons, because of age, because of religious, moral um, situations, uh, will push one treatment more than another, and, and that's completely acceptable. Uh, it's all about trying to increase the probability of um, trying to conceive. So, just in summary, um, Unexplained infertility is a difficult one because um, people do want us to identify a cause and want us to correct that cause. But here uh, is a situation where we can't always identify a cause and it's about picking a strategy that will further enhance their chances of pregnancy in their pursuit of um, having a baby. Thank you for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe.